In this video, <coughs> we're going to take a look at creating a basic three column layout for a, a website. And it's going to look something like this. As you can see here, hopefully, that we have five sections to this website I've sketched out. And I should point out, using a marker on a whiteboard or a pencil and paper is a great way of getting a good start on a, on a web page layout. So we have a header at the top, a navigation bar at the side, a main content area, uh, a sidebar that could be pictures or ads or something, and a footer for some personal information. Now, when we mark this up in our web page, we're going to put things in, in approximately this order. We have a header at the top, a nav item, and then, then a section with ID of content, a section with ID of sidebar, and a footer. And for uh, we're also going to put another section, and I'm going to call this ID equals container. You can call it, call it a box or, or whatever you want. And we're going to use that so that we can kind of move the whole body of the web page around all at once. So what we're going to address in this video, what I'm going to show you is how to get from this linear format to something that looks like this. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow a process something like this. We're going to one, um, add the markup for your basic five structural elements plus the, the overall container. Two, we're going to uh, do a something of a browser hack that makes sure that we can display these uh, these containers, these markup containers, uh, in the same way across multiple browsers. And so we're, this is called the uh, display inline hack okay, for browser uniformity. Number three, I'm going to turn on borders. to make sure that I'm aware of where one, one of these blocks uh, markup container starts and one of the, the, each one stops. So we're going to do that and then we're going to uh, we're going to use uh, height width float clear, as well as some other properties, but these, these primarily to get the layout into the way that I drew it previously. So now that we've kind of established these steps, let's demonstrate how to do this on the computer. Now in terms of website workflow, there's a couple things I should point out. Sometimes students ask me, now, how do, I, how do I set up things so that I can kind of preview and get back and forth between my, my CSS and my, um, and my HTML and, and viewing it in a browser and testing things out? I'm going to show you part of a workflow that, that I recommend as, as we're getting started out. So I'm going to put three files on my desktop. Okay, I'm going to put the HTML file, the CSS file, and then I'm, it's, it's two files on the desktop, and then I'm also going to have a browser window open. So I'm going to open up my text editor. I'm using TextMate. You may be using Notepad++ or Notepad or TextEdit. And um, I've got some default text here that I used to put together my HTML5 documents. And I'm going to save this to the desktop as index.html. So now, if I look at my desktop, here's my index.html file. Okay. I'll go back to the text editor. We're going to create another document, and I'm going to save this one also to the desktop, and I'm going to call it style.css. This is where I'm going to put all of my styling properties, for my style sheet declarations, to format the index.html document that I've just created. Okay. So lastly, I'm going to put this together over here, and I'm going to right-click 
on this and I'm going to open it in Google Chrome and you'll notice there's nothing there yet because there's nothing in the body but I'm also going to open this in Firefox which also shows there's nothing there and I'm going to open this in Opera so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some markup. So let's add these elements. Like I said, I'm going to create a section ID equals container. We'll close that one off. And then I'm going to create a header and a nav. and a section ID equals content <coughs> and then I'm going to create another section ID equals sidebar and then I'll create my footer okay. so there we have it, I'm going to save it and now if I go to Chrome and I refresh, nothing's still there because there's no text to display. Okay, so I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to say header, navigation bar, main content, sidebar, and footer. I'll save it, go back to Chrome, hit refresh, and you notice I have one, two, three, four, five um, blocks of text. These are my block elements. Now I want you to notice though, if I go over to Firefox and I refresh this page, these elements are displayed in line. I go to Opera and I refresh the page, they're also displayed in line. Okay. I believe this is because Opera and Firefox do not yet recognize these new HTML5 elements. And so it, they don't know that these are block level elements and should be displayed stacked on top of each other rather than in line. So the first style sheet instruction that we need to give uh, the browser is to display these blocks in line so that we can have a consistent experience. So I'm going to go to my style sheet and I'm going to have items for section and header, nav, and footer. And so for each of these we're going to say display block. Now that I've done that, I can save, I can refresh, that stays the same. I refresh in Opera, that still stays the same. Let me see. Ah, and I forgot. I've done this in the style sheet, but I have not created a link to the style sheet. I'm going to link, I'll just use this link relationship style sheet. I'm going to change this href to style.css type.css and we won't worry about those others. Okay, so now that we've done that, now there we go. We get our consistent experience across all of these browsers. Okay. So, um, next we're going to draw borders around these so that we can see where we're at. So I'm going to say border 1px solid blue. Header border 1px solid red nav border 
one px solid green ten footer border one px solid um, violet If I do that, now I have these multicolored bars across each of my browsers. Okay. Now we've got this far. We've drawn our boxes. We know where the block elements are. They're all displaying like a block across the browser consistently. But now we need to figure out how to get these to flow well. Okay. And one of the key things here is we can use float. Okay. So the header is going, I want it to stay as a block level element. But the nav, I'm going to float left. And each of the sections, I'm going to float left. Okay. And when I do that, you'll notice the navigation bar, the main content, the sidebar, and the footer all show up on the same line. Okay. But I just want the navigation bar, the main content, and the sidebar on the main line. The footer, I want to stay clear of this float. Now, I'll remind you, float kind of takes things and floats it off to whatever side you want. And then it kind of acts, treats it like kind of an inline element. The text will wrap around it if you've got other like paragraph text or things. And so we have each of these three are kind of floating together. But footer, I want to, to stay clear. So I'm going to go down to footer. I'm going to say clear both. Once I do that, now I have header, navigation bar, main content, and sidebar. Okay. So what I can do now is I can say I want my I want my nav to have a width, of, say 100 pixels. When I do that, it just increases the size slightly. Now, I'm going to need to create another um, declaration for the content ID and another one for the sidebar ID. Okay. So once I've done that, I can say content, I want to have a width of say 300 pixels. And sidebar, I want to have a width of 100 pixels. And when I do that, then I get something a little larger. Okay. And then I can look at this and say, well, that's nice, but I, I need some more space vertically. So I'm going to in increase, we can look at this, I'm going to increase the height of these three elements. Okay, so I can go nav, I want to have a height of 300 pixels. Content will give it a height of 300 pixels. And sidebar will give a height of 300 pixels. When you do that, now I have this type of layout. Okay. If I were to increase the size, then it might fill the screen more. Okay, Our next goal is to add a little space in here and to kind of look at things a little bit more. Okay, So this, this looks kind of small on this browser because I've got such a wide resolution on my screen. Okay. But I also want my header and my footer to show up with uh, about the same width as these. So if I look at this, I have 100 pixels, 100 pixels, and 100 pixels. Okay, So 1 plus 3 plus 1, that's 500 pixels wide. Now, uh, so I can go here to my header and say width is 500 pixels. And do the same thing for the footer width. 500 px. And when I do that, it comes up a little bit short, but once I turn these borders off, I should be fine. 